But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead, in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. On the one hand, there is the, let's call it the objective um, reality of our salvation created, I'm getting that word from verse um, 10, created by God. We'll go there in just a minute. And then there is our subjective. When I say subjective, I don't mean any less real. I just mean this is something God does toward us. It has reality even apart from our experience of it. And then there is our experience of it, our subjective experience of that reality. And what I want to stress in this session is that this gets almost all of the emphasis in verses 1 through 10. Not quite all. We'll take up next time how utterly crucial this is. There's no salvation without our subjective experience of this objective work. But notice, there's no mention of faith here. There's no mention of our um, response at all in these verses. All there is is God's mercy and God's great love with which he loved us. We're still dead. We're not participating in this with conscious reformation or reception or welcoming or approval or delight. We're just dead. And while we're dead, God objectively takes the initiative and he, number one, makes us alive. So think of that as the miracle of creation. And that's not something we do. And then, passive voice, we've been saved. So who did the saving? God did the saving. We didn't do the saving. And then, raised up. Who raised up? God raised up. And then, seated us. Who did that? We didn't seat ourselves. God picked us up, sat us down. And then God, for all eternity, will do the showing. And then, let me jump forward into the next uh, sentences, and right here is what we're going to see next time. That right there is our subjective participation, and there's lots to say about it. But notice, after we pass over that, and he stresses that even that is not of our own doing, it's the gift of God, but let's leave that for next time. Here he says, grounding it all, we are his workmanship. Now, you couldn't get any more objective than that, right? We are his poem. That is the actual Greek word, poema. We are his sculpture. We are his painting. Paintings don't paint themselves. Sculptures don't carve themselves. Poems don't write themselves. We are created. There's the key word. That's why I wrote that back here. Created by God. That's what I mean by objective. So we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So I just want to stress in this session how utterly, maybe that's an overstatement, I don't want to overstate it, how remarkably focused Paul is on the objective dimension of our salvation. Now notice, 
We were dead in our trespasses, and God made us alive with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. So, all of this objectivity of being made alive, being saved, being seated with Christ in the heavenly places, being shown his his, uh, immeasurable grace and kindness toward us, all of it is in our our identification with Christ, with Christ, and our union with Christ, because it's in here, not just with, but in union with Christ, in union with Christ, in union with Christ. So the question then becomes, since all of this objective achievement of our being, where does it start? We are crucified with Christ. That's not in this text. That's over in Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. I only include it here because if we jump in right here, made alive with him, we forget that we died with him. And here's, here's a little interesting thing I'll throw in. We were dead and we had to die with Christ in order for this death to die. <laughs> we were spiritually dead and the self that was spiritually dead but very much alive in the sense of living out our own selfish desires, that dead self had to die. And so Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. My old self died with Christ. My dead self died with Christ. Then made alive with Christ. And then raised with Christ, seated in heaven with Christ. And we'll see where in Colossians, uh, where is it? Colossians 3, you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. That's where we are right now. God sees us as it were already in triumph, in Christ, in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So I'm going to add that. Appear with Christ. I make that list just so that you can see how objective our salvation is. It's because we're identified with Christ that we've died. We're identified with Christ that we're made alive. We're identified with Christ that we're raised, seated, will appear with him. All of this is objective reality, and there's no mention here of faith yet. Faith is essential. Don't misunderstand me. It's going to be essential. Nobody is saved apart from faith. But oh, how we need to realize and soak in God's sovereign, objective initiatives in saving us. Now, next time, we have to ask, okay, how did we get in? How did we get in? How did we get identified with him? What is the subjective conscious experience of the reality of objective salvation of the creation of God? When it says in Ephesians 2, we are his workmanship. We were created. We didn't create ourselves. We didn't do this workmanship. Yet, there was an experience. That's the name of it right there. 